Hello and welcome to the uh, Tuesday, June 2nd, 2015 uh, Fiscal Committee meeting. We'll call the meeting to order. I need a motion to approve uh, the meeting of May 5th. Minutes? Second, Erickson. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We'll move on right, uh, right away to our uh, an update with uh, Jim David, we're gonna talk about public facility ticket fee. We discussed this briefly last time we met, but uh, we got rushed out of the room, and uh, Jim, I think, has an update for us. Thank you. Good evening, Jim David, Legislative Operations Manager for the City Council. In May, the committee had discussed revisions to the ticket fee ordinance. That is uh, applied to all city-owned sports or entertainment facilities that have a fixed seating of in excess of 2,500 persons. This discussion was prompted by an April audit report that identified several issues with the tech ticket fee ordinance, specifically that the, that the audit report, or excuse me, specifically the audit report recommended, among other things, that the fee structure should be, pro or should be simplified or allow operators the discretion when working with promoters. It also said that it should ensure that there is no conflicting wording between agreements with operators in the ordinance. And then finally, enforce or revise the wording in the ordinances or in the ordinance that requires operators to remit fees to the city within 60 days. Councilor Erickson, Finance Director Tracy Turback, City Council staff and representatives from SMG and Sioux Falls Canaries met in May to discuss possible improvements to the ordinance. The first major improvement was to subsection A, which was intended to expire in 2005. The group rep recommended that subsection A expire once the baseball season ends in October of 2015. No other professional sports team was found to be using this section in ordinance. The group recommended clarifying subsection B, which covers all professional sports team tickets. The revised language makes clear that this subsection addresses all professional sports team tickets regardless if it's seasonal or regular tickets. Subsection C was revised to include discretion for the facility operators. Operators will have an opportunity to negotiate the ticket fee with concert promoters or other organizations that sell event tickets. And finally, under the, these revisions, subsection D recognizes the management agreements and allows them to trump ordinance. This was brought forward due to discrepancies between the management agreements and this section. And then finally, if you recall, the committee had considered or had discussed an, uh, an amendment that was put on the table by Councillor uh, Erickson. Uh, this would remove the 2,500 seat provision. Uh, this would, if this amendment is a passed it would now or it would include the pavilion and the Orpheum Theater. And then last week, uh, city finance had also offered an amendment uh, to subsection B. Uh, what this would do is make that subsection B would apply only to the Canaries and all other sports, uh, sport teams would be covered under subsection C, which is that, uh, which would allow the SMG to negotiate the rate for those uh, tickets. Uh, if you have any other questions, I know that uh, uh, Finance Director Turback is also in the audience. He might want to speak to, to his proposed amendment, and then, of course, uh, Councilor Erickson. So. Thank you, Jim. Any questions for Jim? Yeah, very good. It seems pretty self-explanatory to uh, uh, Tracy Turback. Did you have anything you wanted to add to the discussion? Uh, you're in support. You're, okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, well... You have the amended version. I think everybody has the uh, copy in front of them. Committee members are seeing one on the screen with the uh, highlighted area for Councillor Erickson's amendment. Everybody's okay with that? Councillor Erickson, do you have anything you want to add or say about that? No, I just uh, obviously support the amendment that is on the screen here. I think both of uh, city finance as well as mine offers uh, a little extra clarification so that all city-owned facilities are treated the same way regardless of the seat capacity um, for uh, my amendment. Um, 
currently the um, pavilion does charge this fee. Um, we are not asking for it to be remitted back to the city, but that they do track it and um, in case there is something that changes with uh, the facility management with the pavilion or SMG anytime in the future, it does protect that and allows us um, that these are public facilities. It is not our, the amendment in, is not my intent to um, take that money from them, but allow them to use it for their facility um, for operational um, as, as same that uh, SMG does currently right now. So just mock that. And they are protected in their uh, management agreement. So uh, there would, they would not see any changes um, in funds uh, based on either one of these uh, amendments, the way it's written. I had a question maybe for uh, Jim or uh, anybody would know October 1st, 2015, the end date for, for the Canary season. Does that include or uh, encompass any playoffs if there were? You know, that's a good question. Uh, we had brought this date up to them and they had, uh, they were okay with it, with okay. the season tickets. And uh, I'm not sure if their season tickets actually cover any playoffs, so they might be a separate ticket, but I. So during part of the conversation, the reason why they picked that date is they already have all their tickets printed and so they didn't want uh, to see a change in their bottom line with the ticket fees because they were using uh, the amount from prior to uh, 2005. Um, they were using that, that incorrect amount and so they wanted to cover what they had already printed so they wouldn't have to change the amount of their ticket sales, reprint, any extra costs. So they would, at that October 1st, if they had playoffs, they would then need to charge the higher rate because it would be expired based on the printing, and they would know that. They, we allow, I mean, based on the conversation, they, they selected that date. The Canaries did. Okay. I, well, what we need to do is move this on to the City Council, and uh, the committee would need to make a recommendation, so I would take a, entertain a motion to do that. Make a motion to move it to City Council. Second, Rolfing. Very good. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Both? With both amendments, do we, do we need to re-vote on that or anything? What to would be the best way to <laughs> move it forward, Jim? If we just have a consensus of the group that this is how you, with these two amendments included with the original, um, staff will take that initiative and create the updated ordinance with these amendments, so. As presented. Very good, thank you, Jim. Uh, okay, we can move on to open discussion. Anybody have anything that they want to talk about or see maybe in the future for this committee to cover? Seeing none, I uh, would take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.